good morning everyone welcome back today we will talk going to talk about how to set up the visual studio for salesforce and how to integrate the same with the salesforce cli so very first thing you just need to download the visual studio click here and download so once the download download will be completed you need to install the same let's execute this exe file <coughs> Now click on the finish button and launch your Visual Studio. So once the Visual Studio is launched, the second step is that you need to install the required extensions. So if you want to install an extension, click here and then search for the Salesforce extension pack and install this extension. Once you will install this extension, it will be ins installed the Salesforce CLI in integration uh, Salesforce CI integration, Apex, Visual Force, Aura component, and everything here. So, this all will be installed together. Now, my installation is completed. I'm, I'm now I'm just going to uh, reload my Visual Studio. Now let's see how to create a project. To create the project, you just need to open the command palette. If you are a window user, press the Control Shift P and select the Create Project Manifest option. If you are using the non scratch off, non scratch off means if you are using the sandbox or the developer. Org. Then provide your project name here. Now select the folder where you want to create your project. Now you can see a uh, create project command is running in background. <coughs> now my project is created. So I selected the manifest option. So by default, the bit one package.xml will be there to retrieve your component. First of all, you need to authenticate your developer or so just press the shift control P again, open the command palette and just type SF PX. Then you need to select the authentication command. So select the authorize and all. If you are using a production or developer org, select the login.salesforce and select the test.salesforce.com. So I'm going to use my dev org, so I'm just going to use the production. Then provide the alias name for your uh, org. Now this will be redirect you to the Salesforce page to log in. Now just enter your user ID and password and log in to your dev org and allow it. Now your authorization is completed. Now go back to your Visual Studio. Now you can see authorization is completed successfully. So it say authorization is completed. Now you can retrieve your code. Now you can see I don't have any folder here. So by default, I have a package.xml file. If you want to do any changes here, you want to add any component, remove any component, you can do it here. I'm going to use as it is. So just right click here and clear out retrieve source in manifest from the org. 
so once you click here you can see salesforce is or uh, vs code is automatically executing a salesforce dx command here and which is retrieving the component in your uh, in your vs code from the salesforce Now my command is executed successfully. Now just open this folder and refresh it. And you can see that all the component is downloaded here. And you can also see the result here, which all component is downloaded. Now let's see if we want to create any class. So if you want to create any APIs class, again press Shift Control P and type SFDX, and from there you can see all the option here available option here. Then from here just select the create APIs class. My demo class provide the folder where you want to save. Just save this file and right click on this. And if you want to deploy on server, just click on the deploy this to all. It just failed because I just updated the class name here. So rename it here as well. Now deploy it again. Now you can see deployment is successful. Let's verify this class is created or not. <coughs> so now you can see that this class is just created. Whatever you want to write, you can write it here. Now let's see what all we will going to cover today. So we will cover how to create a class, trigger and everything you can create. And if you already have any test class or if you want to create a test class and execute the test class, how to do that. So let's see how to execute a test class. So I'm just going to open any existing test class in my org. So if you open any test class and your test class have at the rate is test or the test method automatically This link will become here if you want to execute simply Click on all test. It will be execute your test class Now you can see my test class is executed successfully. Let's verify the result. So if you see, it will be give you the um, uh, what like uh, result for your test class. Your test class is executed successfully. How much time it take, and all the log whatever you have. But if you want to see the overall code coverage as well, for that you need to modify your you need to modify your workspace setting and need to set this attribute as a true. Let's see how to do that. Just open that VS code, setting.json and add one parameter here. <coughs> and set this value as true. 
Delete this file. Go back to the test class again and execute your test class. Now this time it will give you your all code coverage as well. Now let's verify the result. Scroll it down so you can see it is giving the code copies for each class. With test coverage and the org wise coverage. Including each classes. Now see let's what all option we have. So simply press Control Shift P and then type SFDF and you will see all the available command here. Whatever the command I have, and if you want to execute any SQL query, just select this option Execute SQL Query, and then type your SQL query here. And press enter. And if you want to use the REST API call, like this one, if you want to use the tooling, then select tooling. Now the command is executed. Let's verify the result. So you can see the result here. Now I can see it is showing me the query result here. And if you want to execute any code in the anomis window, then you can do the same here as well. Let's execute this command and see the result. So it's automatically created one file for you that's called tab apex so here you can write your code like suppose if i want to fetch some record from the contact Just type your code and go to the command palette and click on the execute anomalous apex with editor content. Now verify your result. And you can see that my command is executed, my code is executed, and here is the output. And if you want to see the debug log in uh, Visual Studio itself, then uh, first of all, set up the debug log. If you have any debug log, that's fine. If you don't have any debug log set up, you need to set up, set up that. So you can see I already have a debug log here. So let's see. Now type debug log. Get Apex debug log. So whatever the debug log you have in the debug log console, that will become here. So now you, from there you can select the file here, and you can see the uh, full debug log here itself. You can see your debug log here.
So whatever the debug log we set up here, whatever we can see from here, the same log you can see in the VS Code. If you want to explore more for this, as, uh, for this VS Code, simply press Shift Control P, type SFBX, and you can see with all command we have. So there are lots of command we have here. Let's scroll it down. You can see you can get trigger lightning app, lightning component, event, interface, whatever you want to do, you can do it here. So lots of options are here. Just play with that and happy coding. Thank you everyone. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit a like on this video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.